Willingness of publisher. Willingness of publisher is necessary. So our authorities, government of India appointed committee, uh, they will discuss with publishers as well as uh, eminent librarians. So thank you so much, Dr. Mohan Khadi, sir, for gave us your valuable time. So now I request our moderator, Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathak, to start the panel discussion. Over to Dr. Pathak. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, sir. Uh, so uh, as we are aware that you know, government of India has already took initiate for one nation one subscription. Uh, for general mm -hmm. subscription and uh, also for APC, uh, this article processing charges in India and committee has been formed for its effective implementation. So uh, phase one, uh, there, there will be phase one and phase two. So phase one, uh, uh, there will be like identification of various consortium and merging them into the you know national consortium. Then uh, e-resources also need to be identified by, for subscription by this committee. <clears throat> Major publisher also need to be identified and then implementation strategy for one nation, one subscription. Uh, and then uh, uh, this uh, common licensing model, uh, model that also will be looked after by this committee, payment model for APC. Because uh, let me tell you, uh, if you see the academic institution for faculty member, they are more interested for APC because as of now they need to pay you know APC from their pocket or from their you know uh, this uh, CPDA grant or their librarians also playing a major role you know to get web off of those APC. But still APC is a you know big uh, buzzing word for faculty members because we know they all wish to have their publications in open access journals and their prominent publisher they you know charge uh, this. Uh, APC charges. So I think our panelist, uh, I request our panelist will definitely, you know, give some uh, insight on this. Uh, so this estimated cost to be negotiated, including APC. This is also one of the agenda. And I was seeing uh, the media at foreign, you know, countries. They are also uh, wrote about our one nation one subscription, and they also uh, wrote about our, you know, this uh, APC uh, point, which is one of the agenda in our. Uh, ONOS committee. And phase two, I think, uh, as per the office IC office order, they also plan to, you know, then extend this to every single user. But phase one, I think they are, you know, concentrating only to this uh, academic institutions. Uh, there will be other issues also, uh, where, you know, with these committees like perpetual accessibility of resources uh, for paid years. I think that is also a very important point. Then long term contact, uh, maybe let's say five to 10 years. Uh, continuity of access, uh, then access of back files along with current subscription. Like what happened as of now, if you go for, you know, any subscription, generally publisher give access for last 10 years or 15 years as per their policy. But this committee probably, uh, you know, they will look after the uh, back files also as um, their this thing. Then annual rates of a, a increase, which we call price cap. Generally, there is a trend, you know, uh, we appreciate also publisher because during COVID period, there was a zero price hike, uh, uh, especially from the, you know, many major publishers. And we also appreciate publishers who during COVID period, they extended their all content, you know, free of cost. They did not charge even they offered remote login access. So that also, you know, that point uh, we appreciate publisher. So this committee also will look after access to back files, including current subscription. Annual rate of increase, as I, as I say, it is a price cap we call 3 to 5% to 7%. Then APC cost also, this will look after, and then copyright term for articles. So these are the few issues. So now I think uh, let us begin the panel discussion. And uh, last two panel discussion, what we did, we started the panel discussion with the librarians, but this time we thought, you know, because publishers, uh, this uh, participation is also very important because they are the one, you know, who will react on the, who will, you know, help all the, this community, reading community to uh, get more contents. So I thought to, you know, start uh, this panel discussion uh, with the publishers. And uh, I start with uh, Mr. Prabhu Desikan, IOP. Prabhu, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? So, uh, yes, I can hear you. So let Great. me uh, uh, put my first question forward. 
uh, to Mr. Prabhu Deshikan. Uh, he is uh, from IOP Institute of Physics, country head. So the first question is, sir, here, uh, what shall be an important opportunity and a challenge associated with One Nation, One Subscription? I'll repeat again. What shall be an important opportunity and challenge associated with One Nation, One Subscription? Yeah, over to you. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, can you hear me, uh, Patrick, sir? Yes, loud and clear, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Prabhatji, uh, uh, Patrick, sir, and MPLA for uh, uh, getting this, what you call, a panel again. Uh, I, I do recall uh, down during COVID, I think it was uh, 2020 sometime in, in October, uh, when we all met and uh, and I also recall at that time uh, the whole one nation thing was more on a, a concept if you recall and everybody was a lot of questions around what if what if if I remember right uh, which was great because there are a lot of speculation and I think also uh, as, as someone uh, you know expressed earlier will it even happen because you know with such a large country like India uh, is a direction uh, one yes it's a good direction but it is something possible right so but the interesting thing is from what if was what we were discussing back in 2020 now today I think we are all here talking about what now right so it's more like okay it's it's no more a discussion it's now a policy or, or, or a formal document and now what now is is more the um, I would say uh, the the uh, theme of the uh, scenario today. Uh, so it's 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 also interesting, you know, when when we just got this, uh, I think probably in, in around second week or first week of August, when the formal notification from the PSA's office was received, and you know we started, you know, internally from publishing, you know, just looking at it and reviewing it, and then Patek sir reached out and said, hey, I would you like to have a you know, a panel around that, and I said, "Hey, why not?" You know, because this this is kind of something exciting. Because, the, like I said, since we were in the past looking at it from what if, now we're in a what now scenario, and I thought it's great to be here. So now, uh, so in terms of uh, the two things which uh, Parak said, one was about what he would call as the challenges, and also what he would uh, he wanted to perceive from our publishers what an opportunity, right? So I, I would rather start with the opportunity because I'm kind of a positive person. So I, I'm looking at it from the big part of the opportunity. And of course, there are several, which I think even my other um, uh, fellow panelists, uh, Piyush, will delve into. But I think from the IOP point of view, I just thought I'll bring this, uh, what I would call as a big opportunity or a big shift uh, from India market, which is in, in useful or interesting to us. Um, uh, as a society publisher, which probably most of the, most of you know about IOP, we are a large physical sciences publisher and a society publisher. And, and in the last I would say three years, especially, we had a huge shift towards what we call not just open access, we call now it's open science movement happening inside IOP. Uh, so from what we were like less than 5% of content on open, now it's almost 30% of our content has become open. Something in line with what uh, you know uh, our uh, keynote speaker was talking about. So there was a huge push from IOP internally and in through our content towards this open science. And one of the things that was you know, kind of skeptical for us from the market of India was, you know, there was a big need for publish, I mean, I mean for researchers to publish in a way, but then there was nothing formal as a policy or even a budget as a, you know, budgeting in, in, in a formal way uh, for publish, for researchers here to publish in a way. So I think the, one of the biggest opportunity as I could see from this ONOS, at least from the document that was you know, reviewed recently is is the big uh, is a clarity from the from the PSS office that yes, uh, you know, we should be part of I uh, rather Indian scientists should be part of the OA movement and they should also be supported with a formal APC um, budget budget so that you know the, they could kind of channel their research towards you know um, making their access or making the content more open to the global scientific community. So I think if you ask me, that's one huge thing, and I've kind of go goes well with what IOP also is moving and, and and you know personally I was a little worried back in you know the last two years like hey where we are going but I think this basically formalizes and and, and gives us a lot of confidence that you know uh, you know uh, the, the government has recognized the need and it also wants to make it formal and you know it, it's it's a good direction you know and I think that's one biggest opportunity I just want to uh, you know put forward here. Uh, 
in case of a challenge, I, I wouldn't call it a challenge, but more a concern, which I think uh, probably because, you know, uh, for most of you who know about IOP, we are not the largest, but again, we are not the smallest. So we are what I would call in the Indian context, we are, we are called the middle class <laughs> publisher, right? We are not the biggest, we are not the smallest, right? And as we all know, when budgets happen, the people who get squeezed is always our middle class. You know, that's the joke that happens in India, as you all know. So that's what I my concern as a middle level or mid-sized publisher is you know how this whole um, when this whole uh, discussion moves forward and, and and things get into what I would call allocating uh, uh, from the government of course uh, and, and a central entity uh, budgeting or rather allocation of funds across publishing or across publishers you know how it will impact us as a mid-sized publisher and I'll, which also means how as a mid-sized publisher how much we can accommodate right to make it work. And as a part of it, we still survive and continue to support the Indian no. researcher. So, so uh, oh. yeah, I request uh, uh, Dr. Bajpayee to please mute uh, Dr. B. S. Bajpayee. Yeah. Yes, my bad. <laughs> please take care of this. Yeah, sorry for interruption. Yeah, sorry, no worries, sorry, no worries. No worries. No worries. I think it's just a mistake. So anyway, so that, that I think is, is is if you ask me as a challenge uh, from a publisher point of view. Again, as I said, I'm just I'm not putting it as a challenge. I'm putting more as a concern because we are there is uh, while the policy is clear at, on, on a top level, as you, we all know, uh, we don't know you know the nitty gritties as how it filters down into publisher level and you know so as a, as I said a mid level a mid sized publisher, uh, you know that's what I would call our biggest uh, challenge. Okay. Thank you so much. But uh, why I say is highly, you know, because uh, this all the IUP is a Institute of Physics uh, is very reputed publisher in the field of physics. And I'm also a man of physics. I when I was in IUP, I remember, you know, this uh, IUP and uh, physics community. Why I appreciate, you know, they right from the beginning, you know, preprint servers. They were a big success uh, for physics community, like you know, archive.org. Now okay. you see many. Uh, preprint servers are coming like cam archives bio archives but if you remember archive.org was a big success okay, even nasa eds i remember that was a you know repository where you used to get all those articles because that time all those oer were not very popular so we had no option but to go to you know this preprint server thank you prabhu sir uh, now thank i request uh, uh, pius ji pius uh, mr pius gupta from acs acs we know it's a leading publisher in chemistry, American Chemical Society. So same question is to uh, Piyush ji. Uh, what's there been important opportunity and challenges associated with One Nation, One Subscription? Over to you, Piyush sir. Uh, thank you so much, Patak sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, very much. Yeah. Fantastic, sir. <clears throat> and I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, everyone, from Dr. Naika, Dr. Jange, Dr. Sarpati, and our board, Dr. Rao. <clears throat> Sima and Pariji, and to you, Patak sir, and our uh, ILE chief, Dr. Tarebeko, fantastic to hear your views. And special thanks to Prabhu, uh, I mean, who has been uh, setting the ball rolling. So, I, I mean, he has made my job really very easy, uh, technically speaking. And uh, uh, to be honest, what I really see is, I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity altogether, one nation protection. And like Prabhu said, uh, normally when people are going into this phase, they are typically also balancing it with the open access thing. So that has been highlighted in the initial paper, because which we saw the notification which came out about the APC charter. So as an opportunity, as a publisher uh, of some reputable uh, American Chemical Society and whatever I have studied personally, I do realize that the publisher ultimately adds value to the research which is happening around. So the opportunity which we are having primarily is to make sure that our value addition proposition reaches out to maximum people. And this can be easily done with O and O. So it's a fantastic opportunity, no doubt about it. Now there will be other accounts like open access, how the things happen. Uh, in fact, in your address, uh, you were mentioning about Uruguay. You know, and similarly, it has also happened in Egypt. They have come across with one nation, one subscription policy, but obviously everything has got a rider. So it's not a plain vanilla where we simply say one nation, one subscription means that 
everyone is getting access so like to mention uh, it is a policy is a good start and once it filters down we will be coming across a lot of challenges so the opportunity for me as a publisher and i can speak on behalf of every other a publisher as well uh, will be that we can we will be helping adding value to the content which is coming out so that will be the greatest opportunity the challenge uh, uh, my friend prabhu was uh, quite clever in saying it is not a challenge but a concern but i would rather say the challenge is actually basic three things the money the quantity and the quality so this triangle has to come across you know you have to make a balance on to it unfortunately uh, i mean i am being very direct uh, unfortunately what has happened ultimately things boil down at price management it is important i am not saying that you should throw away the price but maintaining the quality as well as the quantity are also eminent parts you just cannot separate so this balance has to be approached whenever this uh, thing boils down you know it is down to the real execution so there will be challenges and that's the most exciting part because there will be challenges we will be looking for different problems we will come across a lot of solutions as well i am sure each of the eminent panelists has got their own ideas and suggestions for it and i am sure that this will be so i what i mean is that onos at this point of time as prabhu said it was just uh, what it is and now it is how it is going to be done it will be an evolving project it you know cannot be uh, something which is static that we plan this and this is to happen like this so this will take its own course own sweet time and it should take actually because it's for a larger good for everyone so that's pretty important and the other thing which i really really uh, i mean this will be my concern is primarily that it as this point of time it is looking like a one nation one consortium so because it has got a limited application at this point of time and hopefully that the phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 comes along there will be several editions so my point is primarily uh, i am actually concerned worried about the sustainability of this program so ultimately we will be having we should be having a long term plan we should be ensuring that there is a sustainability so even the libraries as uh, uh, some concern and the challenges and uh, uh, is, is coming across for the libraries as well so libraries and publishers we are just facilitators so if something is sustainable over a period of time we can find different opportunities work together and make sure that our mission of taking science or open science as prabhu loves to say it will be and that is the future actually uh, how we as publishers and you as libraries as facilitators we can take it to the end so these are my comments i hope if there are any questions i'll be most pleased to answer sandeep sir you are on mute हाँ हो गया हाँ डन डन हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर या आई वाज नॉट एबल टू अनम्यूट माय सेल्फ थैंक यू पीयूष जी एंड आई मूव टू प्रभु सर फॉर सेकंड क्वेश्चन बिफोर आई मूव आई रिक्वेस्ट पीयूष जी टू प्लीज सी ऑन योर दिस ऑडियो पार्ट देयर वाज सम डिस्टरबेंस सो यू कैन चेक योर ऑडियो क्वालिटी एंड बाय दैट टाइम आई यू नो पुट द सेकंड क्वेश्चन फॉरवर्ड टू प्रभु सर ओके Uh, so uh, we have a uh, question number 2 uh, for uh, uh, prabhu ji uh, the question is uh, how uh, can publishers how can publisher help while implementing onos yes prabhu sir over to you sure um i think the the, the key um what we called um, learning is 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 for us as a publisher here is because i think it's fair to say even though we would have done uh, quite a bit of what i would call um, bringing uh, consortiums together or any of those kind of global uh, uh, initiatives i think the scale of what you know happening in india is, is something that's that's that i would say is a lot of learning uh, you know uh, is involved uh, 
and um, I think one of the key things which I think you know, from a publisher point of view is that, like we need to have an open mind, um, you know, in terms of saying, okay, rather than um, looking at it like a threat or it could be like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I think uh, the first thing what I feel is, is an open mind and saying, okay, let's explore and see where it has, where it leads, right? And interestingly also, I think when the policy came and, and when we discussed it back two years ago, it looked like it's all going to come all one time, you know, as, as one phase. But here at least it's good enough to they're split it into phases so there could be good learning you know uh, from the publisher end that's one key thing i feel so the open openness is one thing which i feel is important uh, and the second thing i think is important and, and fairly which i can convince i can say right openly here in from an iop point of view is the support from the uh, the city management or all the way to the top because i think these are uh, i mean although you know, uh, all of us or most of the publishers that we all work, I mean, you all work with global publishers. I mean, for IOB, for example, India is a very critical market, not just from, uh, you know, from the point of view of, uh, you know, commercial, but also from the point of, you know, you know, amazing content and amazing research coming out of India, which we want it in part of our, you know, IOB, um, uh, what I would call, um, you know, uh, platform, right? So I think uh, the, the another thing important, I think for this, to be uh, to go in the right direction is also the complete support and involvement from the senior management uh, right all the way to the top which i think is critical because it can't be like a level like regional or even you know slightly above regional uh, kind of scenario so it could be all the way to the top there should be uh, you know a kind of commitment saying hey you know this is happening in india yes rather than being suspicious how it is heading let's have an open mind and see how we can come together and prove this right uh, and the third thing also uh, from a publisher's point of view is how we can, as you said, is uh, having continuous dialogue, I think is key. So I guess, as we said, when we go to the first phase, which is which is kind of very preliminary and ringing as as Piyush uh, very you know, subtly put it, like, you know, one nation, one consortium. So it's kind of the initial phase is like bringing all the consortiums together, which is fine because I think it's, it's like baby steps, as we say, you know, in, in a large project like this, right? And rather than rushing it, it's good to go baby steps. So I think that will be a good uh, uh, learning. And I think, you know, we are, we are open as a publisher and also hoping from the other side, when I say other side, as the people negotiating from the, on behalf of the government, keep an open, uh, you know, dialogue with us to say, you know, how can we make this work together? How can we, you know, make this, you know, a, a good, what I would call a win for both sides as we take it to the next level? Because I think the phase one is critical because it's not just bringing everyone together and, and, and create what I would call X dollar or X pound of saving, but it's more like, okay, how can we, make it sustainable so that you know what phase two will be much more you know uh what i would call the uh, uh long long strategic and you know a more uh you know withstanding kind of a, a model for both the publisher and the uh you know and the uh, what you call libraries so i think in my in my point of view i think two critical things for uh, from the publisher point of view is, is keep an open mind and uh you know support and um, you know involvement from the senior management all the way to the top I think is is I feel uh, critical uh, as we go to the first phase. At least in the first phase, I think is critical. Hello, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prabhuji. And before I put second uh, this question forward to uh, Pius Ji, uh, I'd like to mention here that both the publishers, Institute of Physics and American Chemical Society. You know, they are, uh, most of the journals, you know, they are having very high impact factors, you know, I would say 30 plus. And one more thing I'd like to bring, you know, in the, in the knowledge of all these participants, this both the publishers, you know, uh, having this social responsibility, few of the journals, they have already made open access uh, journals and they are, uh, you know, available, anyone can go and make a use of those articles. So now, uh, PUC, I put you the second question sure. forward. The question is same. How uh, can publishers help while implementing ONOS? So please, uh, yes, over to you. Thank you, sir. And in fact, I'll just extend what Prabhu has been saying. So uh, I'll add just my two cents to it. And it's primarily two things which any publisher, uh, I mean, especially I can always ensure you about ACS, uh, is the fact that uh, we do come up with a lot of experience of similar nature. So what is very easy for us is to transfer this knowledge and skill set to uh, the execution of the ONOS, if required at any point of time. Uh, with all due respect, I don't really mean to 
demean anyone that they can't decide. Not definitely they can do. They understand better uh, the market. But uh, uh, like I'll just give you one example. When we said that, uh, I mean, when we talk about open access or open science, in India, the challenge is primarily we are still focused. I mean, we're talking about one issue, one subscription, but we are focusing upon the price part of it, as I said. Now, when we when we start talking about open access and open science, we should remember that we ought to have an infrastructure to execute these things because this is a, a very uh, rigorous process. It has to follow certain steps. For example, the legal angle comes into it. So you should be aware what sort of you know uh, licenses uh, you you should be going in for. So if those things happen, like Sir was saying that you know green open access is the choice. Green open access is very good, but on the legal side of it, there will be several you know licensing issues. Typically, uh, like for ACS, I know we are the first publisher who had arranged these licensing systems as well as the infrastructure with OCL. So the moment you start processing an open access thing, if we have got a workflow, we have got a structure, and you simply have to just click, click, click. So it's just, just a very touch free. You really don't have to delve into the nitty gritty. You just have to follow a few clicks and the workflow, and your job is done. So what I really mean to imply is that this is the share, this is the infrastructure which we can share with the institution. So whenever this thing happens, we will be most helpful in setting up the structure for you, helping you with the guidance if required, maybe on the licensing. How, I mean, uh, uh, one, one general question of a lot of minds is that subscription is such a fantastic thing, then why not every other country is following it? So obviously, there are certain you know limitations and challenges to it. And uh, uh, as of now, Egypt and uh, Uruguay, they are already doing it. Uh, Germany and the 20 European countries have done it in a different style, as we call it as Plan S. India, initially, uh, I remember the first tweet two years back from uh, uh, Dr. A. Vijay Raghavan regarding our nation one subscription, and probably the idea was to follow Plan S, but later on it was clarified that India is not going to join the Plan S thing. So obviously it is something new which is evolving. Uh, all I can say is that we have got the uh, experience, we have got the uh, uh, quality of people uh, who, who contribute to write, to edit, who uh, follow open, open science closely. We have got the infrastructure. So whatever we have as a society, it is all for the chemistry and the advancement of science. So it is all which we can always offer you. So if, be it a legal, uh, uh, you know, uh, query which you want to uh, be resolved, be it our expert query from any of the editors you want to have, be it our experience in ONOS, be it in life, we'll be out there to support the whole thing. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, PUC, and uh, we appreciate actually and for you know, joining us this panel discussion. And I, I think we'll discuss during this question answer. Uh, of course, as you say, sustainability is the key, and of course, India is a you know critical because there are various kind of institutions are there. Even you see like IIT, then you say new IIT, old IIT. There you know number of users completely different. If you talk IIT Mumbai, they have more than thirty five thousand students. When you say IIT Mandi, they have very less students. So you know publishers also it takes time to understand the you know the nature of tier of the institution. So that of course that is a very you know critical things. And plan S, I think, yes, uh, is the issue when people say, you know, CAM archive has come just after the plan S. Plan S has some issues which we'll discuss. So now, uh, thank you so much. I think now let's move to our panelist librarians. Uh, we have, uh, you know, eminent librarians uh, for this uh, uh, discussion. So I'll start with uh, uh, Dr. Manju Naika, who is the chief librarian at IIT Mumbai. Uh, so Manju, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I yeah. can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manju, for joining us. So I'll put forward my first question. Uh, implementation of One Nation, One Subscription. How it will help the development of libraries in India? Yes, Manju, over to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sandeep. Yeah, I would like to thank uh, MPLEA, uh, particularly organizing committee, uh, Prabhat Pandeji, 
Sandeep, and also I would like to thank uh, Mohanji, uh, particularly asking all the panelists to uh, kindly concentrate on the future of library uh, in the proposed uh, one nation, one subscription. I would like to thank all the two publishing friends, speakers who spoke nicely. They have shared their views uh, on this initiative. Uh, I would like to thank all the other uh, panelists as well as participants okay, for joining on this and an important uh, a topic uh, which is uh, relevant for almost all, every academician and researcher in, in India. Uh, if you ask me, uh, I'm a librarian, so how uh, it will uh, benefit uh, the library, uh, particularly development of the library? Uh, there is always, whenever there is a new uh, initiative or new thing, it comes, uh, always there will be a different opinion. Now also there will be a different opinion. Uh, most of the, okay, uh, the librarian activity will be taken care at the central level. Uh, so there will be a, a, the less workload on the librarian at the individual library. Uh, that uh, doubt is there, but if you are an optimist, if you are open-minded, if you are ready to take a challenge, always there will be a great future for the library. So what is the, okay, based on my experience, if this uh, type of new initiative if implemented, at individual library, uh, what challenges we are facing, most of the libraries are common is that there's a budget, always there's a bus shrinking budget, always there's a budget cut, etc. But if the government of India takes care for some time, the basic resources at central funding, definitely that will be a reduction on the individual library budget. So there, there will be a big relief for the library and also there will be a huge uh, opportunity for the users to access a more content. And also there will be a, a, a responsibility and operational expense, payment, subscription, and other activity will be a, a less. But those time you can utilize for the library resources. Uh, uh, this is the first uh, the advantage uh, if the proposed, okay, one nation, one subscription implemented uh, at any time. The second thing is that what we learned from COVID-19 so what we, which applied to the globally, we need a public space, particularly public space uh, means whether a public library, whether academic library, whether a special library, we need a common space uh, to learn together, to discuss together. That's why globally, there is a huge demand for libraries after reopening of the university across the world. Now, definitely uh, this, uh, uh, this type of new uh, resources, if you are provided, there will be a new, okay, huge footfall, user footfalls to the library. So there will be a, a relevance of the library irrespective of the new initiative. And the common thing is that uh, every researcher is working or publishing his content to increase the visibility. Why is publishing his content in a publisher journal reputed content, which means to reach more audience. Why publisher also will content? to reach the quality content, particularly edited content, particularly peer review content to the global audience. So uh, the challenge before every, whether advanced country or poor country or developing country, everybody has a challenge right now, there is a financial constraint. So the One Nation, One Subscription will take that challenge. They they are they want to provide access to all the content whatever the content is required for them through uh, na a national subscription so for everybody there is a huge opportunity it's not a challenge that was the uh, big opportunity for everyone but individual institutions or state level we cannot address this challenge big country like india only can handle this type of challenge so again, there is a misconception about one nation, one subscription means the every citizen of the country will get the access. More than 100 crore people what to do with accessing the IOP content, ACS American Chemical Society Journal. The currently we have a roughly around 3.0 million researcher in India. So what to do with the farmer, school children, 
and uh, and our literacy rate throughout the country is also less except one or two country what these two illiterate people will do so uh, we can assume that even if you take another 5 years even if you take another decade 3.5 million into 3 we can reach the 10 million researchers okay to target so we need to think okay on this aspect the second thing a second okay advantage for the library community is that now today we have too many consortium too many state university central university cft university etc particularly cft university uh, libraries conditions are very good okay compared to the other library they have very less challenges but this type of new initiative large scale at a short time so those benefit that it will reach to everybody so that we okay and also it is giving a more opportunity particularly networking of state university central university and also cfta national library particularly public library rrlf etc there is a scope for networking of libraries particularly uh, to provide a more uh, content to the users so uh, i consider this is there is a, a positive thing for the development of library Uh, and also particularly uh, at the individual at the library uh, the level so library uh, have a more role uh, to particularly to create awareness about the new resources uh, that is a huge uh, uh, okay responsibility on the individual library if you think everything is available in the google uh, and if it's everybody responsibility it means nobody responsibility at there is a individual library level you need to monitor the usage and also you need to create awareness about open access particularly to contribute the open access and particularly uh, to reach your institute uh, research work to the global audience so uh, this type of one nation one subscription there will be huge huge uh, opportunity for the librarian i feel that second thing we need to understand that this uh, this type of initiative will be much bigger than make in india our national education policy etc because libraries are a basic infrastructure for higher education as well as middle and middle level education so if you don't have access to the content which means we don't have a okay access to the what is the global standard in any area so only thing we need to wait is that we should not expect right. immediately right. any output it takes long time benefit because this is a long term goal particularly one nation one subscription is a, a completely different type of project by government of india without any bias of religion or reason or any political okay bias it reached every researcher in india they should get access to the quality high quality knowledge resources yes. but yeah immediately there is no benefit but it takes a long time and uh, you know, a particularly uh, a specific okay answer to this a one line answer to this question there is a great future for library in india thank you thank you uh, dr manju uh, thank you so much uh, dr ral can you hear us uh, yes yes sandeep yeah so thank you so much uh, dr lal sir uh, he is chief librarian nvrc and he is also delcon coordinator yeah, we i think everybody knows him and we also sincerely thank we know everyone you know like uh, how uh, in spite of yes, having sir. some emergency at home he has joined so sir big thank you uh, you know you know words to actually you know thank you for joining this platform uh, so sir i'll put forward the same questions and i request our panelists to please stick to the time 3 uh, to 5 minutes to one question because you know we need to uh, wind up this by 9:30 though it is going to very interesting this uh, discussion so uh, same question to you uh, dr lal this implementation of one nation one subscription uh, how it will help the development of libraries in india yes sir over to you uh, thank you sandeep uh, good evening to all panelists uh, seniors uh, participants and ilas professionals friends first of all thank you to mpla uh, dr prabhat pande ji dr sandeep pathak ji for the opportunity to be a part of this panel uh, next i would like to uh, mention that you know uh, as i am a part of onos okay so my disclaimer that uh, whatever i will share or express that will be my own opinion 
own view based on that my uh, 15 years of experience managing this uh, Delcan consortium. Okay, so uh, as a protocol, I will not uh, share about that related to the budget parts or policy parts of that uh, ONS. Okay, and I will share that my own opinion. Uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, you know uh, mention about that uh, origination of uh, origin of that uh, ONS, how it is started. Uh, you know? So first of all, in the year 2011, 10 11, Dr. Vijay Raghavan was the secretary of DBT. And we had, as you know, that Delcan consortium, CSR also managing that NKRC consortium. So uh, they had said, you know, when the budget was discussed, so they had said that, you know, uh, CSR is also the part of DST, DBT is also part of DST, why two consortium is going on? So they think that, okay, why not we should merge this bo both consortium, okay? So then after meetings happen, then uh, there was some problem, so it was not merged. Then inquiry came that how many consortium is there in India? So this plan is started from the DBT, okay? So in 2011, they discuss all these things, okay, how many consortium going, government consortium is going uh, in the India. So further after this uh, advisor DBT, he became that uh, uh, secretary to PMO, as you know. So then this program went to him and then he taken the you know, initiative. So all the, if he take the any initiative, difficulties are there, challenges are there. You know, when I was considering this consortium, challenges was there. People are not sharing the information, whatever we requested, they are not shared. But if governments wants, they will implement anything, you know like uh, monetization, uh, service tax, GST, everything has been implemented. So there is no doubt uh, how it will be man, uh, uh, implemented. It, it will be definitely man, implemented, okay? So further, I'm talking about that, uh, uh, how it will be benefited to the libraries and what ONS will be helped for the development of libraries. Definitely, if this consortium will, uh, means uh, all consortium will merge, so, there is uh, fund saving, save the funds, cost saving is there. So budget issue is solved. So further research output. So whatever scientists or professors are there, whatever they are doing the research, so definitely research will increase. As well as users, as you know that uh, every user say required that different uh, you know, uh, uh, articles or different papers. So diversity of users need is, there, so that will be also solved uh, through this uh, consortium. And resources, suppose that there are resources, some limited resources are shared in that consortium, in different consortium. There are some duplications, like what I told that NKRC is also uh, subscribing some of journals, we are also subscribing, so DVT had issues, why uh, both, both uh, consortium is subscribing same things, and we are paying in different, different places. So, uh, as well as resources, whatever resources are there, that will be also shared. So uh, people will get that more resources with their less funds, as well as networking and collaboration. So if a networking is there in beginning in the 2000, before the 2008, I also approached that all DBT institutions, they don't share, they don't share their resources. Once consortia has been implemented, everybody is sharing and they come to the single platform. So, of course, so networking will be a strong, collaboration will be a strong, manpower will be less, so, and library services will be increased. So I think this is that good initiative and people will in, uh, definitely appreciate. So I'm not uh, discussing about how it will be implemented phase-wise and other things. So this is government policy, but it will be effective and it will be implemented. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And when you, you know, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you so much for, uh, sir, sharing your views on the question number one. And I remember, you know, when you use this merger word, I remember, you know, when this, uh, uh, this uh, UG, uh, our, this has come, ESO Sindhu. So that time three consortium, Indest, 
uh, Enlist and UGC InfoNet, you know, where merge. And I think this is the time we must also remember Dr. Jagdish Arora. I think everybody will be agree. He played a very important role, you know, in the journey of consortia in India. So I think uh, he also contributed a lot uh, for this forming the various consortium in India. So now I'll move uh, to our next uh, uh, panelist, uh, uh, Professor Lakshman Rao. Uh, Professor Rao, can you hear me? I am last uh, last uh, intruder. So first you complete those who are uh, listed. Okay, sir. Okay. Please. So I'll move forward to uh, Dr. Shatpati. Uh, Dr. Kishore Shatpati, he is chief librarian at ISI Kolkata. And I think he need, need not need any, he doesn't need any introduction. We all know him. Uh, we love him. So uh, yes, Shatpati, sir, over to you. But I'll just repeat the question number one. The implementation of One Nation, One Subscription how it will help the development of libraries in India. Yes, sir. Over to you. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Dan, uh, Dr. Sandeep. Uh, uh, first of all, let me thank MPLA for organizing uh, this webinar for on a, uh, such an important topic. Though the, the government of India has already issued uh, the, the notification uh, for uh, for constituting uh, the program and uh, the planning and execution uh, committee to be headed by the uh, the director in Flipnet. And uh, so this is going, the dream is going uh, to be, you know, but true, uh, because it, uh, I remember in our earlier uh, you know, discussion in this August forum, but now but there were uh, uh, um, uh, certain doubts uh, but now among people uh, now how it will be implemented. But now it is a dream that has come true. Uh, coming to your question, uh, no, uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Manju Naika and Dr. Lal. They have made my you know, life uh, simpler because they have already you know, uh, discussed uh, about the, uh, the benefit that library will be getting. Let me you know. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, let me put the, those things into you know, b b simple points. Number one, if you b b um, uh, take from librarian's point of view, uh, it will save librarian's main hour. If you never look into library activities, the major chunk of uh, the library staff you know, goes on acquisition of uh, journals because they, they are, uh, that is a continuous process. No, but uh, acquisition of journal involves you no know, selecting of journals, then negotiation of uh, you know, uh, journals, reviewing licenses, all those activities, uh, processing of bills, passing of bills, all those things takes a lot of library main hour. With the implementation of ONOS, the substantial library main hour will be you no know, safe. And the librarians can use this main hour for uh, no, impair, no, doing other uh, no, uh, activities uh, that will develop libraries. They can implement no innovative, other innovative uh, new services or new ideas in that library section. That is number one. Number two, no, but it will give uh, no access to more content. I was looking into the various data and uh, no, um, um, uh, various uh, reports and you no know, sources you know, um, uh, in the internet. And I found that you no know, you know, all over the world, around 30,000 journals are uh, uh, published annually by more than 2,000 uh, publishers. Around 2 million you know, articles are published every year. And there is an increase to 5 to 7% in debt every year. If you look uh, to a search, the you know, uh, large number of scholarly you know, output in India, on and average, the institutions are having access to five to ten percent, or the, at the best of twenty uh, percent access to these scholarly you know, uh, articles. With the implementation of when the band OS, I think this uh, you know, um, uh, um, number will definitely go up. That means the libraries will have. Uh, um, access to more content. Then number you know, three is that you no know, uh, duplication, uh, you no know, reduction of uh, duplication of subscription that uh, Dr. Lal was saying. Different consortia, different institutions subscribing same content. So there will be a you no know, uh, reduction in the duplications. That means we'll be saving a, a, a larger chunk of money. This money can be utilized for subscribing other new content. Yeah. Then uh, by you no know, the uh, fourth thing that uh, uh, that we can have at the national level, licensing of these resources is a major, major issue. 
specifically from librarian's point of view, uh, when I'm subscribing 2025 databases, I have to go you know, 2025 different license agreement. It is uh, you know, very cumbersome as a librarian until unless you have a legal bent of mind, uh, you know, the publisher will um, put you into different legal jargons. So by, with the implementation of O and OS, we can have a single you know, um, uh, common licenses at the national level, which can be taken care of by the experts. Uh, um, uh, then the, the uh, last uh, thing that library will be uh, benefiting is uh, the uh, uh, promotion of open access journals. As uh, the uh, no mandate says, uh, if you look into the you no know, government notification, it says that you no know, they were, they are going to negotiate on APC charges. They are going to find out the um, uh, high quality open access journals, and uh, you no know, uh, 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 this own. OS will boast open access uh, no, uh, my content in the libraries. So that is my initial uh, no, um, words that uh, what library will be getting benefits. Having said that, this will bring some kind of challenges uh, no, in the library sector also, because O1 OS cannot uh, by, no, afford to subscribe all the contents that is available in the world. What happens to the libraries those uh, 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 how they are going to sustain for those resources which are not subscribed at the national level that is uh, through ON OS. Will the library fund will be substantially reduced? If it is reduced, whether they will be able to subscribe these you no know, leftover uh, resources with the limited funding or not? That is one part. Second part is the sustainability that our publishers friends were talking about the um, uh, sustainability. Then the third part, it will be very, very interesting to see how the committee is you know, uh, selecting the resources uh, in a, such a diverse, vast in education ecosystems in the country with a large number of institutions. Everybody's requirement is different and unique. And it will be very interesting to uh, see um, that uh, how uh, ONS is looking at uh, you know, um, removing that barrier. And uh, I hope with the kind of honor, um, you know, uh, August members that are there in the committee, certainly they will uh, find out a uh, you know, uh, solution to uh, this. And last uh, concern is that. Uh, uh, that uh, it should not be hijacked by large uh, publishers so that uh, the, the smaller publishers or society uh, publishers are left out. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Satpati. And you rightly said because there are more than 5,000 academic publishers and there are many society publishers. And like in our case, we are dealing with, uh, you know, 80 publishers. Now let's see how the everybody is, you know, looking forward to this move, movement. And there is a one more issue which I don't know how this will be dealt. Like when we, you know, try to merge all the consortium at single platform. So this consortium already they have signed agreement with various publishers, especially for the subscribe content and their perpetuality. So there also because whatever uh, consortium has already merged, you know, earlier. So what has happened to their perpetuity to their content? Those, those, those things are always you know, debatable. And I think that those will be definitely come into the picture. So now I move to the uh, Dr. Suresh uh, Jange. We all know him. Uh, he is uh, you know university librarian and Gulberg University. He's a very good speaker. Uh, so uh, Dr. Suresh, over to you. I'll again repeat the same question. Uh, question number one, implementation of One Nation, One Subscription, how it will help the development of libraries in India. Over to you, Dr. Suresh. Yes. Very good evening, uh, Dr. Patak. Audible? Okay. So, Honorable uh, President of uh, MPLA, Prabhat, uh, Dr. Prabhat Panditji, and all the esteemed uh, uh, members of MPLA, uh, uh, all the panelists, and uh, all the esteemed uh, publishers. After listening to the eminent uh, librarians, and also uh, listening to the eminent publishers regarding uh, one nation, one subscription policy, which has been enunciated by government of India very recently. So let me tell you that uh, any new policy or any new initiative or any new technology, whenever it comes into the market, definitely we have a more of a negative thoughts rather than a positive side. 
but i am very optimistic that this sort of an uh, one nation one subscription policy we mm -hmm. you'll be will be able to provide a new dimension in the academic librarianship to support the research and development developmental activities of the country and for me this policy is not a very new it has been a word but in a different format yeah it has been said that uh, earlier we had a different consortia so this one nation one subscription policy is an improvement over uh, uh, the e shodh sindhu consortia instead of going for a peaceful kind of peaceful short short chote chote consortia they are trying the national government of india thinking to develop a, at a national level okay to mare to hathi ko maro lute to bhandar ko luto ye policy hai ye ye acha hai ki chote chote consortia se nikal ke hum bada bada kuch hum uh, let us think positively and bada you know, ye one nation one subscription policy think karne ka ye jo mauka hai bahut bada hai see i am not talking from the perspective of iits or iims or iisc see ye to our central university they have a fund they can do it i am a ordinary a uh, person of from the degree colleges or from the person of a state university where budget is a big issue under such circumstances this sort of an uh, policy becomes so very very inevitable in a country like india wherein we are talking about the right to information act okay it is a privilege that every academic and research community will have access to plenty of electronic resources that to free okay so as a librarian i am optimistic and if we now the quality of a research especially in the state university should not suffer for the want of a quality journals okay now what happened although we are a part of each of the sindhu consortia very recently american chemical society has been left out okay so where some one or two was uh, almost one year back you know there was a discussion that uh, turn it in software which will be given to each and every university in the country all the universities will get we were supposed to subscribe because there was a big statement that the turnitin will be given to each university free of cost humne chhod diya baad mein kya ho gaya there was no combination means it was not materialized so kab kab it darr bhi lagta hai so but we are optimistic that things will work out see for the development of our libraries in india definitely this onus is going to be a, a great strength there is no doubt about that okay so library definitely you know we with the quality of research will improve okay it will also help the nac especially the nac criteria 3 the research innovation and extension which carries 250 marks we the librarians can play a very important role because we will be able to get majority of the online journals because that to freely and see one important aspect is mai kabhi bhi bolta hu ki dekho bhaiya humko aam se matlab hai humko mango aam se matlab hai वो किस पेट से आए हमको ज्यादा उसको थिंक करने के लिए क्योंकि हमारा यूजर्स आर गेटिंग सेटिस्फाइड वॉट एवर दे वॉन्ट अरे तुमको साइंस डायरेक्ट चाहिए दे दो तुमको एल्सर चाहिए दे दो सी जो भी वॉट एवर दे आर आस्किंग इफ यू आर एबल टू गिव टू देम इफ देर सेटिस्फाइड वी आर हैप्पी सो दैट इज अ कंसेप्शन एंड इफ यू डेफिनेटली द लाइब्रेरी यू नो द लाइब्रेरी कैन कॉन्सेंट्रेट मोर ऑन more on other innovative services rather than most of the time we are concentrating behind the scene that is a one advantage and librarians ko aure ke kya taklif hai especially for the online resources is wo quotation mango transparency act dekho wo ye tender bejo all these major issues will be hamara headache pe nikal jayega only concentration is how to optimize the usage of a e resources to our academic and research community our see there there are so many advantages advantages are there i will not touch upon the disadvantages you see and for me see let me tell you when this policy has been implemented by it is a process of implementation we need to understand that these policy means there are some eminent like eminent academicians white chancellors publishers most of them are there already they are they are, they are cracking the head it is not that simply they have launched the scheme and it is going to be implemented successfully there are very very brainy people are already inside in it 
होपफुली थोड़ा दो तीन लाइब्रेरियंस को अंदर डालो बोल के मेरा बिनती है बस क्योंकि सब लोग बड़े बड़े लोग हो गए तो थोड़ा दो लाइब्रेरी एक दो तीन चार लाइब्रेरियंस को भी यू वी हैव टू इन्वॉल्व एंश्योर दैट दे इन्वॉल्व इन वन इंडिया वन सब्सिडियन पॉलिसी में वो रहना चाहिए सो दैट दे आर मोर ऑफ अ प्रैक्टिकल साइड पब्लिशर्स आए या वाइस चांसलर से चलो नो प्रॉब्लम चलेगा एंड मेरा एक सी मेरा ये कि लास्ट इफ एट ऑल इट हैज टू बी सक्सेसफुल देयर आर टू थिंग्स वन ऑलरेडी मोहन केड़ा साहब सब सब लोग बोले हैं कि इट ऑल डिपेंड्स अपॉन द विलिंगनेस ऑफ पब्लिशर्स साइड सेकंड जो है इट्स द कंटेंट ऑलरेडी वी वी हैव सीन ई शो द सिंधु कंसोर्शिया because from the college side from the yenlif can yenlif now it has become each other field wo bolte hai humne 10000 journals diye bhaiya 10000 journals diye ki kitne logon ko fayda hai wo so that's why the content plays a very important role ab i am the university librarian and the nac coordinator so when i say that there are so we have will a publisher american chemical society has been left out there are many publisher people ask science that it hai kya turn it in hai kya are yaar see the 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 policy maker should ensure that the content of this one nation one subscription plays a very very important role because it is not that jo bhi hai sab kuch deo aisa nahi you have to have consult we have a discussion with the librarian find also publishers take into confidence of librarian then you develop this one nation one subscription policy that will really last for a long time वो फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस है वो तो हेडेक सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के लिए हमारे लिए कुछ नहीं हाँ हमको जो आया है जो भी मिलता है हम खुशी है वी कैन रेंडर बेटर सर्विसेज टू अवर यूजर कम्युनिटी दैट्स फॉर माय परसेप्शन थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर सुरेश फॉर इनलाइटनिंग दिस एंड एज यू सेज यू नो वी विल हैव टाइम फॉर अदर यू नो थिंग्स वंस दिस थिंग्स आर सेंट्रलाइज एंड डेफिनेटली देन लाइब्रेरियंस कैन यू नो डिवोट मोर एंड मोर टाइम मोर फॉर यू नो टू इंट्रोड्यूस इनोवेटिव सर्विसेज in fact i would like to add here you know whenever new institute you know a new institute is created whether it is a new iit new icers <clears throat> and i generally see you know they keep asking the other institution what is your collection development policy how your library committee has formed what are the rules you are followed if we few institute they have a tender thing few things so what i say same line like like we have a one subscription one nation one subscription there can be one single model also you know when new institute joins they you know yeah. need to follow those certain guidelines so yeah. with these words uh, now i move to uh, uh, professor lakshman rao we have all know him he is a president of telangana library association and he is very renowned uh, professor he is now ret- retired professor from usmani university hyderabad uh, sir over to you but uh, as a protocol I'll repeat the question question is the first no, forget question. the question i'll i'll just let me yeah so I, sir, I, i'll touch the, i'll touch the question but uh, my basic question to everybody is onos means is it one nation one subscription rate are we reading between lines saying that it is going to be free to everybody we were talking about consortia of consortia earlier we all know that the rates from one consortia to other consortia for the same uh, source is different they were not supposed to share right so now is it going to be only one based on the subscript number of subscriptions in the country are we going to are they going to fix the rate and uh, we have seen uh, earlier some consortiums also the government of india or uh, uh, inclubnet has given free of cost to many central universities then they stop then they said you we will give you only few then they said you pay right so already what was experienced the whether the government of india will be able to pay for so many journals uh, uh, per subscription so therefore what i feel i mean one one nation one subscription rate so whoever wants you buy it at that rate or infinite will buy at that particular rate for all the consortia or members of the consortia or members of the organization this could this could be possible and it is not possible to have a free access to anybody the reason is when we are talk about the egypt only 29 libraries or 29 institutions are part of the uh, consortia where the government of uh, egypt is buying for the um, for these 29 institutions it is not for everybody in the country everybody in the world and second is we have to understand the publishers game i'm sorry my two publisher friends are there we they they don't allow us to do that because there is a study it says elsevier is making 40% of its uh, subscription rate as a profit 
and are we are we are we going to are they going to lose i don't think so if you play one card they will play three cards right so therefore it is a good initiation but where it will end because last 10 years we are talking about consortia of consortia consortia of consortia now just now dr lal said about three consortia merging together it took a lot of time etc then at the same time if you look into the latest developments oa versus o n o s if you put it oa is increasing right as as a, as i am if i'm not wrong not wrong about 10 years period about 20 million articles have come out in open access day after day open access is coming we have also seen you were talking about aps in the in some of the european countries they came out with a policy that you pay 5% extra to the subscription rate then you are allowed to publish so many number of articles right so aps is something different again the aps comes open access and where is the relationship between aps and onos there is no relationship at all then at the same time recent uh, uh, announcement by government of us what it says by 2025 whatever the delay was there for the fund, uh, public funded research output it should it should not delay as soon as it is published it should be provided access this is what the latest uh, out, outcome of the uh, us government so we as it is plan as we said by 2022 january where is january it has not apply, uh, it has not completely applied so what we are only looking is we are looking from uh, from the positive point of view that it will help us In the, to the libraries but what is going to happen how far the like, government of india is going to help us then at the same time if you also look into uh, a apc charge why not we the government uh, so many wonderful library uh, laboratories are the institutions are there. why can't they start a journal open access journal and make it free because general publication is not difficult india has everything and most important we all know corruption is very important factor in india it may be anything you may buy you may sell you may do you may want the corruption plays a key role and this is a commercial activity so therefore we don't know how who will influence corruption does not mean only money money influence whatever it is corruption is a very very uh, different uh, ways then at the same time you are able to see that uh, infinite is planning for uh, a resource like jget so that open access resources are coming in and today what happened because of the pressure because of the uh, in continuous in prices increasing we are able to see sci hub right and that is how, what happened what is going to happen when we play one card the publishers will play three cards so the things are not going to be that easy and you, you i am sure you must be knowing vijay raghavan has already completed his term now professor sooth joined as an advisor to the government of india so naturally coming one one order one one constitution of a committee is not going to be what what we are thinking we are only we are wishful thinking but i don't think what we are thinking is going to happen i only feel ultimately that the uh, possibility is uh, that the institution they may fix a price at the national level that also publishers will never agree i am telling you they will never agree and you have seen in netherlands germany they stopped uh, subscription paying and in germany they waited for one year and then the publishers gave at free of cost for one year the netherlands all all those three four countries they, uh, they they stopped because of the increased prices right so can we do in our country ultimately what happened that is a different story but all the institutions suddenly stopped saying that we will not pay a subscription that happened in germany that happened in netherlands germany ultimately they paid as i said no they they gave the subscription without subscription money they gave so therefore i think what we are thinking is i my guess is it is not going to be free of cost to everybody it could be possibly a fixation of the rate which also very difficult the publishers may not accept right and then the, the also in the in the initially we all know open access the publishers never agree they they agree they, they have not agreed and they straight quality etc and today what happened they themselves are publishing the uh, so called uh, Mm, uh, open access journals so in next two years it may be plan as it may be government of us policy and european policy then funding then financial crisis in all the countries 
uh, all these things will play a key role but only thing we have to say what the publishers are going to do right and i have just seen the statistic every every uh, publisher for example mo most of the publisher they are getting about 20% of the uh, subscription as a profit maybe they may come down instead of 40% they may take 30% and 10% they may um, i mean give in a different form that could be possible so therefore we i think we are we are uh, uh, reading between the lines and we have to only see like uh, dr lal is there member of the committee when i saw the committee uh, all the all the uh, consortia members are there we have to wait and see what past is different past our experience is different and what we have what we were thinking was different and what is going to happen is going to be different and it is not going to be in anybody's hand because this, this is uh, deals with crore uh, sorry I, I would like to say billions of uh, uh, rupees you just say you know i was just saying 5 billion dollars is spent on cancer research in us so they say when we are spending why should we do and librarian we have a one or two uh, 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 what you call the responsibilities for example we should why not we promote pre preprints we can pre we can promote preprints we can promote open access i mean to come overcome little i'm not saying that then informal uh, resource sharing could be possible right so there are all, the, all those things also must be thought by the committee it is not as simple as we think thank you very much uh, thank you so much sir and uh, i think uh, now we'll move to the question number 2 i think the question number 2 was the you know about the same topic which you already now mentioned so our question number 2 was on the same line but before i move i'd like to uh, mention here as you rightly said like most of the consortium what we they do now Uh, they negotiate. They negotiate. Uh, you know, with academic publishers, few resources they give. Uh, you know, on uh, complementary basis, of course, government pay to them, and few of the resources they just negotiate, and the individual institute need to pay. So that is what the, the existing most of the consortium uh, they does based on the you know requirement of the institutions. You know, same in nature. So now uh, I'll move to the question number two. Uh, the question is according to you, what does it mean uh, of one nation one subscription is it a central funding or central negotiation and individual payment by customers again i'll repeat because i as i said this is this is the question which professor rao was mentioning is on the same topic again i'll repeat to all the our panelists according to you what does it mean of one nation one subscription is it central funding or central negotiation and individual payment by customers so i request dr manju to start with and i request all the panelists to please be stick to 3 to 5 minutes time over to you dr manju i think you are not able to uh, mute yourself yeah just a second let uh, is it fine yeah. yeah 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 sandeep thank you i think this is the question professor rao also raised and some of the participant also raised it seems to be you also or okay put a correct question to the panelist yes after listening all these things we should not take a doubts we need to clear our doubts so what consortia national consortia does yes we have a diversified country each institution need a, a specialized resources but there are some resources which are common to everybody so there is no point in subscribing for country specialized resources which are required by only few institution so in that case probably uh, uh, consortia national consortia may negotiate it so do you ever want they can okay subscribe it but the resources which are common particularly you take india is a dominant in chemistry so either you take cfti you take state whoever is take the maximum number of research output is coming from physics and chemistry so uh, uh, there is a i hope committee will uh, identify the common journal title which are required for entire country entire country means all the researcher who are doing a research in chemistry and physics for those resources they will do the central funding the, the resources which are specialized which are required specifically for few researcher so if uh, the service provider participating in the consortium definitely they will negotiate the price that is also benefit but for everything there will be a, a yeah, comment but these two things uh, two arrangement would be a, a great uh, help i hope 
I answered uh, this uh, this question. Second question is that uh, uh, the currently it takes care about subscription of resources and also it takes care about APC charges, particularly to publish in a, a very reputed open access journals. Uh, what uh, my suggestion is that the missing point is that uh, any subscription model currently nothing is perfect. All subscription model are evolving. Whether you take transformative license agreement, the countrywide uh, national agreement, or whatever diff different type of models are there, everything is evolving. So there is no for so far there is no uh, finalized without any error without side effects. Everything has a side effects. Everything has certain disadvantages. Seems to be the current uh, the model. It will it, it will minimize the side disadvantages. Okay, yes, many of you have already listed the advantages of this model. Now, what I am proposing is that, so in uh, even very good open access journal, in order to publish an article, you have to pay the article processing charges. So if it is completely green, then only it will become a, okay, free for everybody. But 90% of the commercial, even society publisher journals are hybrid journals. There is a double okay dip. There is a double okay way of generating a revenue. So the in addition to subscribing at a national level and in addition to supporting a APC for open access journal, but national consortium should uh, should initiate a new model, particularly to publish Indian journals, particularly Indian content, a platform like a Plus, like a F1000. Like if, if, if those national consortium, it starts, yeah, they can invite even Nobel laureates as editors. So instead of paying for APC uh, for the uh, publisher, they can give the okay, author processing charges to publishing in the platform, the Indian research platform, multidisciplinary. So this will be the real game changer. In, okay, and also it will definitely will change the thinking of the current publishing models. So one way we are promoting the current ecosystem also, and uh, at each at the national level, they can bring their own national research output. So later on, they can reach to the even best, okay, world research content by inviting them. So it will be, it will sustain. So there is a way also to generate a money. And second, another point which I would like to mention is that when we are talking about a, a, a national okay, subscription and, and uh, we are trying to cover every citizen. So again, there will be issue like whether they will give a countrywide IP access, whatever India has IP address for everything, or they will identify the institutions, or again, they will link to the other, like each and everything, whatever central resources are coming. So there will be, since it is evolving, there will be some challenges. Hope once the time passes, okay, some of the challenges will be addressed. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. These are the my views for this question. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Manju. And I, if I remember, you know, when NDLI was introduced, I think they had given access to two databases, South Asia Archives and Ibrary. And I think that was for all the citizens, only they need to register. So thank you, uh, Dr. Manju. Now I move to uh, Dr. D.D. Lal. Uh, Lal, sir, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, this question. Yes, I understand the question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the question you. I understand. Let me uh, yeah. tell. There is a three questions. Suppose that uh, will uh, ONS will be central funding, central negotiation, or individual payment basis? Okay. So uh, means uh, ONS means it doesn't uh, understand that everybody is getting everything. It doesn't work, you know. Suppose that we are working in the neuroscience, so we require only neuroscience journal, not other journals, okay. So it cannot be given by ONA, uh, ON, OS, you know. So government doesn't work on our perception or our discussion, okay. Let me explain regarding that my consortium, how I conceived and how I work. So you will get a little bit idea about that when OS. So when I, uh, this uh, Delkan was discussed among that all uh, directors of the DBT. So they have thought that in 2005, 
2004 itself, DBT was trying to get that, uh, you know, uh, member of that in Filmnet. At that time, we have not uh, had the resources. All the life sciences journal was very costly. We tried maximum level, but there is some category, you know, uh, unit CT level, uh, 12B, 12A, something like that. So there was some category, different category was there. So we have started discussion and that further, uh, the input, input required, what we need. So all the assignment was given to me during the 2008. So I worked and that then I requested all the DBT libraries to provide the inputs. What you are subscribing, what you need. Okay, there is two things. So I made that union cut leg. Suppose that the institutions have to unko kya chahiye hoga aur kya ho subscribe kar rahe. Based on that, we made that union cut leg and further we requested for that, you know, uh, uh, proposals. Many of the publishers that time, they increased 20%, 30%, you know, 16% like that. Uh, yearly increase was there. Some of publishers not agree on that, that time. So they were out of this uh, discussion part or out of Delcan consortium. Okay. So during that uh, discussion of that funding, suppose that central funding, why I'm discussing this central funding? Because during the discussion, some people given the proposal, why not, uh, it should be sharing basis. So all institutions will give uh, their share and then it will be for that Delcan. So we told no, we don't want to ask them. Their authority is not there, his director is not there, he is not satisfied. So central funding is always better. So we told, we require central funding. So if DBT says direct fund, milta hai, then we will run the show. Otherwise, Unka director nahi, unke authority nahi hai, unke ke administrator nahi hai. So there are lots of problems in that. So always central funding is always you know better than others. As you uh, aware about ESS, what happened with ESS? Okay. So ESS, if central funding is not there, IITs and other institutions are telling we have funds, we can negotiate, we can discuss with them. Why we need that uh, in preliminary? So this kind type of questions arises. Okay, so always central funding is always better than all the uh, you know uh, mechanism. So in case of that merger of the all all uh, <coughs> consortium, so government is work. Government will work. What expenditure is going on for the all consortium? And after that, they will plan. Okay, how much? Funds is being uh, you know, uh, given to the publishers or you know, uh, spend. And after that, how much resources we are getting? Where is duplication? So every work will be done in the phase-wise. Okay. So it, government will analyze each and everything. Who will be benefited? The users are required different, different uh, resources. In our uh, consortium also, when uh, Institutions came to know that ki our is this fund, that fund. So, we have 100 journals subscribe to some NI, we have 600 subscribers, we have NI PGR, we have 30, 40. So, when we discussed, then they told us, no, no, our fund is this much, it is going for, from DBT. Why not you including my so much journal? So, another request come. Okay. After that, DBT has decided, no, this should be in centralized funding. Then it is run, means smoothly. So, uh, regarding that uh, negotiation, suppose that negotiation part is also there. Central negotiation, suppose that ONS is there. So, centralized, there is a panel, there is a committee, negotiation committee. So, that discuss about that, all the matters regarding that negotiation. And representation will be there with that all consortia parts and all the members. So there is no hanky panky in that. So, and uh, centralized negotiation is always better. So uh, this uh, this ON, OS uh, committee will discuss about that uh, all the uh, you know regarding that legal issues is there, payment terms is there, APS charges is there, perpetual issues is there, prorata issues is there, so late payment interest GST. All these are issues being taken care of. Okay. So in other consortium, what we are doing, some consortium is agree, uh, some publishers are agreeing on uh, perpetual access, 
some are not agree, some are agree on GST, some are not agree. So these are the problems are there. Some are not agree on uh, uh, ICAD are legal issues. So they, they told that you come to the, before that consortia in 2008, what you used to do? All the librarian, whatever publishers send, we just sign and send to them. They don't uh, you know, uh, read the uh, agreement also. They don't accept that our terms. So suppose that if one nation, one uh, subscription is there, so more power will be there. If you have that more money and you, you will be given that more power, you will negotiate better than that uh, single consort. Okay. So I think uh, this is the good initiative. And uh, I already explained that central negotiation, individual payments is always not better than you know, uh, not better than the funding. So central funding, I support central funding. So suppose that central funding is there, so you have that more power to negotiate. Yeah. If you do not have central funding, so you will, you know, uh, uh, individual institutions will tell that, no, we have fund, we can negotiate. So there is a failure, chances of failure. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much. Yeah. This is my input. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Kishore, over to you. Seema, can you un unmute him? Yeah. That, yes, uh, Dr. Kishore. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sandeep. Uh, I do agree with uh, uh, Dr. Lal. No, it may, if you look, uh, look into the office memorandum that has been issued uh, by Government of India on August 3rd, uh, 2022, uh, if you look into the point number 10, uh, but, no, it uh, clears it, uh, clearly point, uh, point out that uh, the committee will examine the financial requirement uh, and modalities uh, and uh, no, um, uh, modalities and mechanism um, uh, uh, for consolidating the library payment from multiple stakeholders like uh, no uh, consortia or no um, uh, um, uh, ministries or departments or the institutions so it is clearly mentioned in the uh, no um, uh, office memorandum so uh, no uh, we should leave it to the best knowledge of the uh, no um, committee members because it's a highly reputed committee that has been uh, constituted and my view is that no always central funding is much more important because at that point of time they will have more bargaining power to negotiate with the um, Publishers certainly they you know because there are certain you no know, uh, you no know, journals which are which may be very specific to individual institutions that can be priced for those resources can be negotiated at the central level. But for that, uh, the, the discussion or uh, the uh, with the stakeholders is uh, very much uh, important. So, uh, um, uh, what I can you know, see at that at the point of time, or I can suggest that you know, this committee should have a consultation with various stakeholders, you know, specifically you know, uh, uh, professional librarians, those who are working in the in the field and you know, managing their the libraries to get. The librarians inside or the, the input before taking any final uh, final decision. This is just a suggestion from my side. Otherwise, uh, from uh, for me, uh, O and OS means it should be a central funding for the major, you uh, know, uh, common resources and um, uh, price negotiation for certain uh, resources which are uh, which uh, are specifically required by limited uh, no institutions only because uh, the there will be a fund crunch uh, uh, no uh, in that way to subscribe all the resources that are uh, published and required by the researchers in india thank you uh, thank you so much uh, dr shatpati for rightly pointed out point number 3 uh, point number 10 it is there so uh, dr suresh uh, uh, are they, yeah, Dr. Suresh, yeah. over to you. Yeah, uh, I uh, strongly support uh, uh, Dr. Manju Nayak uh, and Dr. Lal and uh, Dr. Sarpati uh, regarding uh, this central funding or a central negotiation. From my perspective, see, central negotiation should be there as a mandatory because it serves as a uh, rate contract, rate contract like a year. EFS uh, uh, rates, you know, that will become a very easy for all the librarians to understand the costing factor. The second is, it should be central funding, then only this uh, uh, concept of one nation and one subscription will work out. If there is no central funding, the small colleges or the state universities, it will be very difficult without the central funding. 
so what i uh, uh, what i think is the central funding by the central government they will have a phase one phase two. they will have different type of an uh, demarcation of a uh, university or a uh, central university or iit they will make some sort of a demarcation accordingly the resources which are common in nature definitely the those resources will be clearly funded by the central government and that will be provided to uh, the respective university or rar research institution but there are certain resources which the central government may not take up may not centrally fund those things to the university or research institution they at that time based upon the central negotiation rate it will leave it to the up to the university or the research institution to bear the cost so that is the only two things that will happen that we already seen in the again case of e shodh sindhu consortium so i feel like that ki upar sherwani andar pareshani thodi hoga ke nahi hoga humko na mai nahi maloom but we are very optimistic that this policy of central funding will definitely will boost the morale of academic and research community and also uh, it will build the strength to library to serve our users with utmost care and diligence so that's my perception yes thank you so much uh, dr suresh and uh, 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 when you go through this you know guidelines they have mentioned they have also even you know taken care of this uh, transition of you know this period because they wish to start this phase 1 from 1st april 2023 and most of the students you know they finalize their thing by end of the december and they are ready to you know place the order but this time i need they may be probably need to wait and you know for the communication from onos so uh, uh, professor rao uh, over to you i I'd, uh, i'd like to you know answer this i think you already covered that point but still would like to add anything to your on this point and uh, i'm sure i already covered but still i would like to say who doesn't want money if central funding is done we all are happy right but will it give our experience earlier experience of consortia for last few years then you can see research minor research projects are not given for last 7 8 years right so looking into all those things we have to only cross our fingers that's all i i if everybody they give they give the government see the question is the items that are mentioned in this letter are for discussion once the discussion goes on the outcome will be coming and this outcome will go to the government and the government has to accept there are number of steps are there it is not that easy but we all welcome if the central funding is given and uh, we have to also see as i already said onos what does what do they mean by onos the scope right uh, is it going to be free to everybody is it going to be only for institutions or what what is what is that does it mean or are they going to give everything to everybody we have to see and as i was as i was quoting you know for example chemical abstracts in hyderabad even though so many universities are there they were there under uh, the consortia it was only given to two universities not more than that number of universities here uh, it was not given so therefore we have to see how the the people in the committee will be able to uh, come out with the things and uh, as everybody said i also wish i also wish that uh, government of india comes out with uh, support to every library now unfortunately i i want to also share now many librarian posts are vacant they are not filling up and now everybody says google is enough they don't understand this so called mini academic administration they don't understand the value of the librarian now i think we have to also need to build up our image and tell them point blank why and how the libraries play an important now they are saying uh, remote access but like you know i was i gave an example recently to many people cinema actor we see he is singing he is dancing but behind that director see cinema song writer music director so many are there it is not the actor so similarly if they are getting remote access it is the background librarians are working hard so we have to we have to at least especially top leaders top librarians must speak don't don't bend in front of the your administrators or your bosses tell them what what you what you feel and what you what is truth that is what i would like to say uh, let us let us hope the best uh, thank you so much and with this uh, words you know this our panel discussion ends over here and i sincerely thank all the panelists i think it was a very you know uh, fruitful many ideas have come and i i'm sure uh, this will definitely you know 
uh, help uh, the also the ONONS team to you know uh, how to deal with uh, various opportunities. So now we have a question answer session, and I request uh, my colleague Seema uh, to take these questions, and uh, panelist may raise you know their digital hand, and then they can answer the question. So we will take around five to six questions. It is already nine twenty-five. So we try to bind up by nine forty-five. I think you must be. You know, uh, it's a dinner time actually. So, uh, Seema, yeah, over to you. Please take five to six questions, and then we'll, uh, you know, uh, summarize. Okay, yes. Thank yeah. Okay. Over. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, question is for our respected uh, president, uh, ILA, and Dr. Khede, sir. Question from uh, Dr. Sri Ram, Librarian, Sikkim University. He is asking how open access is going to a challenge for ON OS. So, how? It is going to help ONOS as author needs to pay money to get it open access. Uh, yes, that is a good question because uh, uh, open access is uh, uh, actually it is uh, I can say uh, in ONOS they they are just accepting as green open access. And question is that uh, I think. Uh, Mr. Sri Ram, no? I just say question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just, I just question. What is this question? I just search. Seema, you can repeat the question. Uh, yes, the question is there. Uh, open access is going to a challenge for ONOS. Yes. So how it is going to help ONOS as author needs to pay money to get it open? Actually, this part is already discussed. Uh, in the uh, panel discussion, uh, because uh, you no know, two things are there. That is, uh, when we are accepting means green open uh, access is accepting the particular part. In that case, uh, one thing is that copyright issue is there. Yes, that is important. Copyright issue is there. And it is a big challenge for copyright issuing in uh, open access. And if uh, gold open access is there, in that case, uh, it is very expensive because here we have to pay article processing charges. Means these two parts are there here. So uh, that's why how it can be uh, solved, this problem, how it can be solved, that is a big question. And uh, one thing is that. Uh, in one case, who will pay that particular academic uh, article processing charge? Who will pay? Government will pay. But in that case, the problem is that public fund cannot use for such kind of things. Means these things are there. So I am saying that it is big challenge, and in future, the, uh, we will get the answer. Yes. Yeah. Seema, next question. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Next question is from Dr. KPS Sengar. Uh, he is asking, I need simple clarification of suggestions from uh, panelists. We are subscribing e-resources from NKRC and direct sub subscription. Only four journals are subscribing direct. Uh, my question is how to possible a specific journal to ONOS? His question, question is how to possible a specific journals through ONOS. So can I request uh, uh, Dr. Manju, can you answer this? Yeah, uh, I think uh, ESS has already taken a, okay, what resources are required by the each institution. So what they are, uh, what resources they are getting central funding and what resources they are individually subscribing. So they will decide that which are the resources are common, which are the resources are uh, specific in nature. But, but if we have a resources behind these two category, so they will not uh, okay address this one. I hope uh, every one of you, whoever is the member of ESS, they have already shared the entire resources. The final call will be taken by ESA, or that is a national consortium only. I hope okay to clarify your yes. doubt. Yes, Dr. Lal would like to uh, he also wish to answer. Yes, Dr. Lal. Yes, as I mentioned in my uh, previous uh, discussion, 
suppose that uh, you know, government has already worked on that what resources are subscribed by uh, other consortium institutions those who are part of consortiums suppose that individual journals like uh, a, 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 any of the institutions those who are who are working in some a specific area and that may not be given by the ons because so this is that uh, related to the only those institutions suppose that we are working in the neuroscience and other institutions are not the part of neuroscience so uh, this is required to only a specific our institution so we have funds or government give the funds for that so we will subscribe for that our resources it doesn't mean ki everything is provided by ons so institutions have funds institutions can subscribe in our consortium also this query was there suppose that you know uh, some of the resources are required by any of the institutions so how it will be fulfilled so it was discussed suppose that national institute of immunology they re- they are working in, in the immunology area so they have funds so it was discussed you have funds you can subscribe your own if you need that a specific journals you have funds or government has given funds so you can subscribe yourself those which which are common that will be come under the ons so maximum people will be benefited through ons thank you this is my submission yes sir next uh, uh, okay sir next question is from tahir hasan he is asking what will be the future of local journal system will it weaken the local publishing infrastructure maybe i think publishing side i can request maybe uh, mr pius or uh, mr prabhu ji if they are comfortable with this answering this uh, question because question is not very clear as far as my my this thing goes local journal system means uh, i'm not very sure what he want to ask tahir hasan is uh, in what uh, can i answer can... sir can i answer can... sir ha ah, yes yes see when you say local journal they are surviving because of two reasons one is the quality and second is the pressure as uh, pressure means our relationship right because i know my friends my friends are subscribing or my colleagues are subscribing or that is one way and second is if there is really good quality the sale is there now we have seen in a ugc care list when it was prepared we have seen all sorts of hangama so many became and then so many were removed and what is happening all that it is just because of the pressure so many journals were included right and if a journal comes good journal comes from india it is not included but a, a journal comes from bangladesh it is an international journal that is that is acceptable now at the same time they are also linking with scopus now all these things you know it depends on the institution and the people who are working for the research it depends on that but it will never leave we can because they are they are surviving on their own strength not because of the institutional uh, support okay. okay thank you thank you so thank much thank you sir next yes. question is for publishers uh, how can publishers help while implementing on os primarily i mean uh, uh, sandeep sir i'll i'll take this chance yeah please uh, prabhu please, please. Uh, prabhu if you allow me shall i i think he can follow you uh, after okay. once okay. you so finish pri- <laughs> primarily yeah i mean uh, as i said uh, it is the experience of quality i mean it is just like a skill set which can be transferred so what has happened that we have been through such situations like uh, uh, every of the panelists said that like, uh, <laughs> our experience in uh, setting up plan s working with oclc providing that infrastructure so all this stuff which comes from experience through a publisher which has been say from 1879 like for ourselves so we have been establishing going through these things setting up those systems and making sure that the user has got the i mean like a researcher should be focusing on research rather than you know being worried about how the apc charges will come who will pay for it. so obviously we have got that experience if if the ons committee whenever they discuss it with us we can always share our best practices with them so that is always there and more so i mean you would also realize that publishers like ourselves we have got several other you know 
stuff which is already available online. So if you are a researcher or a librarian or a facilitator, you can go. Uh, I mean, uh, there was a, a, a discussion about preprint server. We have got Cam Archive, a preprint server already available. So you can experience how it really works, how you get a DOI, how it is recognized, how how actually you can use it for publishing into a, a typical <coughs> publishing program. So that is there. So those things are already there. We can help in arranging all those things. We can help in providing the infrastructure. I hope that answers the question. Yes, yes. Uh, right, the same thing, like to add something. Some of the institutions are paying APSR. The I'm sure slowly the institutions will agree. All the institutions will agree to pay APS uh, for the for its scientists and the uh, researchers. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll come to you, Dr. Kishore. Uh, Seema, can you unmute uh, Prabhu sir if you'd like to add anything? Yeah, I, I think. Uh... I think it's kind of a little bit of expansion into what we spoke earlier about how as publishers we could support right I think I talked about how as a you know uh, a global publisher we need to be open about how this things evolves in the market like India I think adding, adding to what um, I think uh, uh, Piyush was mentioning I think the global <laughs> experience uh, in terms of us working with different um, types of institutions as you said this ONO is, is not just limited academic which of course is a big part of the whole landscape but also research and as you said there are certain specialized institutions like that so, so what you said is there you know from ISI so a lot of uh, you know what I would call myriad of you know institutions are going to be part of this uh, big landscape that we are kind of rewriting if I can use the word right so which is where I think um, you know our experience working with similar kinds of institutions globally and of course you know when yeah. we talked about the OA element you know the fact that we work with different ways of implementing this in institutions i mean whether we can call it a read which is what is historic as happening you know adding up to the publish element which i think is what you know this this will probably be evolve into right so i think we have experience you know probably one of the large uh, you know initiative i mean other publishers uh, as acs is you know in terms of doing this you know in a country wise in majority of the european markets and also we're doing a lot of that even in, in a market like us which is still in early stages of this whole transformative uh, uh, process goes. So I think uh, the experience factor, and of course, the not to forget, you know, importantly, what we are as a society publisher, um, you know, uh, although we are obviously commercial in some element to survive, which I think is, we all agree, uh, the, the key, uh, you know, mandate for us as a society publisher is to is, is open science, right? So I think in, in the right direction, which the ON is, is moving towards is open science. And I think our, as a publisher, we are not just you know, it's it's a vision, you know, which has been completely revamped uh, on a global level is to say we should support it in, in any form of other. So I think all these, you know, like I said, the, the initiative which is happening here, merging with what we have as a global vision, I think is is one big way I can say, uh, you know, aligned and stand support the research community in India. Yes. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Prabhu sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Kesu would like to add quickly anything. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, the initiative like OL, OL, OS can never be successful without the help and support from publishers. So it has to be <laughs> hand holding kind of activities. The publishers has to you know, support in, in terms of you know, promoting you know, open access, open science in India, and they have to you know, come forward. In the same way, government of India has to you know, uh, uh, raise their hands to you know, hand hold activities so without no uh, no both side agreeing uh, uh, to a particular point it will not be uh, successful so the um, having said that that is bad uh, support and uh, help from publisher side is uh, highly essential to make this consortia sustainable thank you okay. thank you so much Seema these two questions I see here I'll quickly answer and then we'll close is it okay Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, so there is a one question from Dr. Nutan. Uh, she says, I have a question, you know, uh, currently I'm working in remote tribal area where mostly students want to study material Hindi language, is it? So I agree with her, but we have a now new, uh, new education policy and language issue will be taken care and I'm sure ONOS will be knowing the mandate of uh, one is this uh, national education policy. So I think this will not be issue. Now there is another question by Dr. Sriram. He's talking about most of the society publishers 
<coughs> do not agree consortia price and came out of the is it a going to happen in ons my experience is as we are dealing with many societies biological sciences society society publishers are very you know they are cooperative and i i must tell you the way you know they agree to the price you know this very low uh, lower price and you know is very, I, i feel is very easy to you know negotiate with them and of course those who do not come on the consortium for platform i think they will miss the bus and maybe then phase two i think uh, you know uh, they need to uh, they will be you know try to be uh, board in the bus so i think with this uh, questions i because it's already 9:40 uh, so if there are any questions left out we are sorry because you know it's a dinner time for most of us so seema shall we i move to the uh, to this summarize the session yes sir yes sir please yeah thank you so much seema so uh, let us you know i'll just conclude with few lines i think it was a fantastic discussion we had very live and critical discussions we you know even one thing i was discussing i seeing that this point long term contract for 5 to 10 years uh, there was a one point in this of order i i feel they should not rush uh, they just you know initially go for few years just see because every year going for price cap because it might happen they need to review and you know maybe there may be a you know uh, uh, you know if uses goes down then what then of course we cannot you know increase the price so uh, these are the few things uh, they need to be so yes uh, there are many budging words one nation one subscription one nation one consortium one nation one negotiation committee so as our learned panelist have also rightly said that it is a very you know uh, good initiative but sustainability is the key Uh, uh, one nation, one subscription has become a buzz, become a buzzing word, and all the other countries are also looking forward to this move. Uh, this move, and publishers also very you know curious on this, and I think I hope they are already must have started working you know on uh, uh, how to you know chalk out with their this thing. So it's challenge for them also uh, for all the academic publishers and to uh, and it's also necessary to you know have a continued dialogue, continuous dialogue with the publisher. for this committee and for the librarians as professor rao has mentioned you know when movies ya yeah, any song is there many people are there in the background and inclusion of apc is a very positive move i saw few foreign media they were also commenting on apc on the positive side and let me tell you faculty members you know they are very happy uh, you know on apc inclusion and i'm sure when you know as i see the guidelines i think it will be a part of their negotiation to you know include apc whether be apc token articles or something something but definitely it will be a part of i think few of the consortia in india they are already doing this uh, apc token articles when they are negotiating with the publisher i think dr lal is i think he is the one who is consortium has already took this movement uh, open we call you know gold open access article tokens Uh, so uh, uh, we all appreciate this movement we all are happy and we all are looking forward for the implementation of one nation one subscription with these words once again i th thank you all the panelist and keynote speaker now i request uh, our honorable president mpla uh, dr Pr prabhat pandey to give vote of vote of thanks over to you sir thank you dr pathak really it's a, a big challenge to implement Uh, one nation, one subscriptions. Full uh, responsibility uh, to ONOS committee. How to implement? How to negotiate with publishers? Um, uh, how to uh, cope up relationship with librarians as well as publisher? So really, it's a big challenge. Uh, we have covered all the issues uh, on this. Uh, uh, our learned. Uh, librarians and publishers answered all the queries so thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, dr mohan r khelde president indian library association and uh, guide us thank you so much dr kishor satpathi chief librarian isi Uh, for guiding us on the uh, burning issue thank you so much dr manju naika from iit mumbai uh, to address us and um, uh, answers all the queries thank you so much dr suresh jange university librarian gulbarga university thank you so much mr prabhu deshi khan from iop 
he um, address us uh, from publisher's point of view and all the queries he satisfied us and um, um, he uh, he is very cooperative implemented also i would like to thank pius kumar from acs he would also um, address uh, his views about publisher's point of view and i also thankful to dr d d lal even uh, his father is serious even then he is committed and uh, gave uh, his time to us so thank you dr d d lal thank you other is now uh, better than previous so oh, thank you thanks god you know um mpl i pray god to speedy recovery and i would like to uh, thank our patron professor n lakshman rao uh, he always guide us uh, from uh, last uh, webinar he also guide us and this time fortunately he um, is with her, uh, us thank you so much sir thank you so much all the participants who joined the sessions and our friend dr kps sangar dr sri ram and dr rakesh khare uh, and thank you so much dr sandeep pathak uh, who moderated very efficiently um, excellently the session thank you so much our colleague dr seema uh, to take question answer session and thank you so much all the members of mpla and to join us thank you thank you once again thank you and we have the participants and we have the participants i thank uh, dr prabhat pandey thank you so much thank you and also dr thank sandeep you. yes thank you I, i request all of you to please on your video quickly we have a group photograph before we just you know sign out i request all the participants